This little Brazilian boy has thousands of ADHD players scurry to him like rats. Today's subject topic is the five foot three short king from Brazil, Lucio. In this lesson, we will learn more about the nature of Lucio players as well as why the majority of the player base can't stay focused on one single task for more than five seconds. The hypersocial species Lucio originate from Rio de Janeiro and have similar ancestors to the moth character we know as Mercy. From many studies, we found that they share one common ancestral trait, which is to be annoying to both sides of the fight, and that is where they do their best. To begin to find a wild Lucio, you will not struggle much. Due to the Lucio being a very social species, you will most certainly hear them coming from miles away, making their mating call the boop sound effect. Furthermore, to better understand what a Lucio is, you must understand the different varieties of Lucios, as well as the life cycle of a Lucio, which we will get into later into the video. The first type of Lucio, and probably the first part of the Lucio life cycle that people get stuck on, is the Florcio Lucio. This disgusting and infuriating type of Lucio has not yet discovered or understood how a Lucio can play. This type is very easy to spot out due to the fact that they are glued to the floor and stuck on healing and will constantly die. We now go on to the second type, Reddit Lucio. This is another annoying type that can't help themselves from trying a ridiculous rollout into the enemy back line just to be insta-killed. But don't worry, it was all worth it for that sweet TikTok clip. Okay, that is enough complaining from me for now. Let's talk about the fun Lucios that know how to play and bring up the morale of the team. That was it, we can't really talk about them. They're nearly extinct like the entire Sombra player base. Okay, okay, just kidding, but on a serious note, the only place you might find a good Lucio player is in Diamond or higher. Like Blizzard employees, it is hard to find one that hasn't committed a crime. What crime, you ask? Looking that good in that outfit has to be a crime. Haha, <laughs> please don't hurt me, Lucio fanbase. Oh yeah, one more thing. The Lucio species may seem like a very caring and loving species, which is very true when they are protecting their team. On the other hand, when you are facing a Lucio, you will be constantly pushed back, punched, shot at, yelled boop at, booped off the map, and many other things it is completely up in the air due to their very spontaneous nature. On a serious note, Lucios can be some of the most fun characters to have on your team. They will always be doing the most interesting plays and strategies and are, for the most part, very nice at their core. The most common problem when a Lucio is on a team is that they are the first in line to be blamed for anything. If a team kill happens and someone happened to witness a Lucio on speed boost for even a split second, the firing squad will line them up. Unfortunately, this leads to many arguments happening over the Lucio not healing, which brings us back to a point brought up in the last edition of Overwatch Geo. Mercies are and will always try to be the center of attention. This can make a Lucio very depressed over time with all the hard work done never truly appreciated by people. Next time you see a Lucio that is playing good, please, I beg of you, just give them a quick pat on the back. It doesn't hurt anyone. Unlike the Mercy you suck off that was doing a spectating speed run the whole game, you could endorse the Lucio that their keyboard wishes it wasn't getting aggressively pounded over and over again like Adam 22's wife. <laughs> It's finally happening! <laughs> wow, I did not know you were going to do that. <laughs> Fun fact, it is actually impossible to play Lucio without aggressively moving around breathing heavy and having insane sensitivity. Just look here at footage of a Lucio user playing what they consider casual. Now that we have a much deeper understanding of the inner and outer workings of Lucios, let's talk about favorable matchups and maps for them. If a Lucio happens to see this map show up, let me just tell you their five foot three little Brazilian tail will be wagging uncontrollably. This is such an important factor of understanding a Lucio. This map, Lijiang Tower, is what truly embodies them. Put simply, the map is their safe haven. With this many potential boops and rollouts, it is no wonder they are obsessed over this map and protect it like it is their own child. 
As you can see here, watch this wild Lucio do what he must and attempt a rollout into a boop. Like many that try this after watching an SK video, they are bound to fail numerous times until they get it right. But once they do, they can finally evolve into a competitive Lucio that actually knows what they are doing. Such silly creatures they are. It is truly a sight to see when encountering one, so here is some raw footage taken straight from them in nature. The Lucio have a few dislikes in this world we call Overwatch. This includes the many characters that can slow down or hinder their movement. Like any dive tanks, if they are hit with one CC, they are pretty much guaranteed to be decimated by the entire team. Truth be told, this is just how it is in nature and the Lucio will learn over time and adapt to this. One thing the Lucio cannot adapt to is the absolute pure hatred for Widowmakers. If a Lucio just even hears the slightest step of Widowmaker's loud-ass fucking stilettos, they will pounce onto the back line and lose all thinking and reasoning ability until that French bitch is dead. It is still a mystery to this day on why the Widowmaker is hated so much by the Lucio, but many believe it is due to the history of the Widowmaker killing many of their kind. Also, it is just funny to attack a Widowmaker and I think everyone can agree. Besides their deep hatred for the Widowmaker, they can also indulge in cannibalism. Yes, you heard that correctly. If two Lucio are spotted on opposing sides, they will at some point begin to duel like they are in the Waffle House parking lot after 2 a.m. Nature truly is fascinating. For now, we end this video with this note. They may not be the highest in population, but they most certainly are a memorable species that should be protected at all costs. Thank you all for watching our second installment of Overwatch Geo. If there is any character you would like to see in the next episode, please leave a comment. Thank you and have a great day, students.